Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So... Now you've got JT on this Earthshaker. Earthshaker didn't work for LFS in the previous game. We'll see if this game it works out here for IG. They had gone on the Centaur or, or used the Centaur uh, for their previous game. Do you wonder what they're gonna Dire team pick. really look to end up putting it with? And we see Morph Wing once again. No surprise there. Morph with or against your shaker is always nice. Ten seconds remaining. They've got the lockdown to work against this Morphling, so he, he would definitely need remaining. to be careful. I mean, we'll see if maybe a potentially a Shrack mid or safe lane. That gives you more lockdown push potential here. Uh, not a bad pick overall with the control he brings to the table. And they go Phantom Lancer. Interesting. Ten seconds remaining. Phantom Lancer are not a hero we see all too often recently. Five seconds remaining. You know, I'm a bit surprised to see it here. But definitely uh, in the hands of GGG, one of his best heroes. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team. There goes that storm. There goes tide. So maybe thinking mid morphling, offling, Kunko, or mid morphling, uh, safely morphling mid Kunka is what I meant. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. The Shrek. And there's that little Shrek I was talking about. So a Shrek gives you potential push, gives you potential lockdown. Um, I'm a fan of it. The damage as well in these team fights. They go axe. So mid Kunkus, off lane, mid Kunka, off lane, axe, safe lane, morph lane. And then safe lane, PL, middle Shrek, off lane, Earthshaker, four Marana, five Bane.
So, I think this game was paused for a second. Unpause now. We'll be ready for game two in just a moment. See who, uh, who comes out ahead. Ooh, what? Let me reconnect there. Here we go. Prepare for battle. Hmm. Wonder if they'll keep this uh three one one. Looking like both teams might do that. Uh, look like both are setting up trilanes potentially. We'll see if that holds past bounties and potential first bloods. And they've got the stun out onto the bane arrow throw. Doesn't hit anybody. And now the stun from the Lena. This should secure first blood. And it will. No surprise either, as uh, LFS have gotten first blood like every game they've played in. They're not going to lose anything so far. But three bounty runes for IG, which uh, kind of recovers the giving up that first blood. Look over mid real quick. As it is the little Shrak against the Kunkka, no surprise. Uh, we've seen Kunkka offlane a couple of times, but it, it has found a home continually over mid. Meanwhile, oh, Kaka, what? Getting a kill bottom on the Morphling. This is again. We see a Morphling going down early. I'll throw the sun onto the Bane. And, yeah, there we go. Taking care of that battle hunger early. We'll see if Mirana's going to rotate around or stay in this lane. They got the kill on the Morphling. Maybe they could get another one. All they got to do is get the Fissure and line it up with the Arrow. And, well, it'll be a relatively easy kill. But if he comes over top... Definitely potential there as well. Especially once you get the Nightmare. So we'll see if the Marana want to make wants to make any rotation out. As for right now, Kaka sitting level 2. Holding on to those skill points. Soon. Need to be careful here. The Ogre backing off. They do not have the fissure available. It's actually the totem that led to that kill then. Or they just got lucky and landed an arrow. But just to continue to eat this harassment is uh, definitely not where you want to be as the ogre. Like, yeah, you're taking a, a good brunt of it. You do have the regen. You still want to find yourself caught out. Can continue to move forward with your eight armor. Take a look over towards top. GGG sitting just about level 3 and a little bit behind this axe. And it did take Nightmare, so maybe I expect the Marana to come over towards top. 
will start his way over mid if he can land an arrow here. And a little bit of help thanks to this ward. Might be able to land an arrow on the Kunkka. Especially if they can get the stun, throws the arrow, and will end it. That's a kill mid. So Kaka making the presence felt. And easily moving around to catch these arrows. Using these arrows to get some farm. Using these arrows to hit these heroes. And I might be able to do so again here onto this Kunkka. He needs to be careful. He gets hit by the stun and he's probably dead. X back, but they'll throw the arrow. It will land. They didn't get the stun, but the Diabolic Edict. There's the leap at the Star Storm. And, oh, the sound's not enough. Kaka to get the kill. Really well done there by the Marana to come over and despite not landing the uh, split earth, still landing the stun on the arrow to get the kill. For a moment. Don't the son of Kaka, the land the arrow. Already morphing into strength, maybe thinking about going in onto the ogre because they've got the help from Emo. And he's level 6. So it's a quick kill there for IG again. 4 to 1 in their favor. And really no slowing down at the moment with the mobility coming out. Or where the movement's coming out from the Lashrac as well as the Marana. Continue to move around and this will ultimately open up some space if they're able to keep it this way They need to be careful with Earthshaker getting low. Kaka, I don't know if he expected to get hit that hard He'll leap away and They'll back off towards the shrine and get some uh, get themselves into value town as both of them will come in to heal and regen their mana off this Meanwhile just the axe over top as they rotate over the Bane towards mid. And I believe they did use the Nightmare and the Brain Sap. A bit of damage being done here onto the Kunkka. Again, maybe looking for a potential arrow, but instead they'll find the Lena with Kaka coming over. And didn't actually throw the arrow, but... I mean, hey. Kill's a kill at the moment. They can continue to keep this rolling, especially with Kaka moving around, landing these arrows in the vision they have. These movements have opened up mid and have really slowed down the Kunkka. Gets the stack with the torrent. At least he's helping his own cause to kind of recover here. Radiant are scanning. Despite the bad laning phase. Shrek going over towards top. When they pull these creeps, it'll spot Emo. He'll clean them up with the stack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Well, it's over there to help. 
clean that up and, uh, well, despite getting caught, he'll at least get a stack for his troubles in Kaka sitting to get solo experience over mid. Torin nowhere close, but Kunkka now needing to back off with Emo rotating back towards mid. It has not been easy so far. Meanwhile, JT goes down to the three heroes here bottom, finally giving up a death to this Morphling. reliably farming for the time being. I'm surprised that Emo hasn't exactly made another aggressive move. He's got himself a bottle. He's saving up for this Yules. He's got a lot of gold at the moment. I mean, he could really get the, the ball rolling once he gets this Yules to try and pick off these heroes. GGG, meanwhile, he's got 600 gold saved up. He's level 8 and having a good time over top, too. Finally outpacing the uh, solo axe that was over here. See this early advantage for the Lashrak. You'd like to see, see him take advantage of it. Right now he's in the jungle and 400 gold away from finishing off the Yules. But Allies. now the Moonlight Shadow comes out and he will vanish before the Ogre spots him. They catch him placing a ward and he will show himself to the Kunkka. Surprisingly enough. Arrow. Sidestepped. That means no commitment here from the Lashrak, who might need to be careful. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. The game grinding to a complete standstill. But as I say that, over towards top, they look over at the Ogre as well as the Kunkka. Should be able to maybe land the kill on the Ogre, but he is quite strong. Starstorm used and will get the kill there on the Ogre. Meanwhile, Lena over mid. He gets really low with Phantom Lancer making the rotation. Shaker going early blink. Picks up the soul ring. He is level 7, so I could still am available. We'll see how they want to go about committing this. Not really worth putting Battle Hunger on the Marana. Bottom tower. So moves top. over towards top. They've got the nightmare. That'll set up the split earth. Arrow follows it up, but it hits the ogre. It should have the damage, but the Laguna putting him in a sticky spot. Fiends Grove kills the axe, and now they look back at the ogre magi again. There's the Yules coming out, and there's the stun to follow it up. Dominating for Emo, dominating for Kaka. Puts him up 4,000 all of a sudden, and Earthshaker, no! Commits the Echo Slam, and doesn't get the kill. That is uh, very unfortunate. Unfortunate that they were unable to 
clean up the Morphling there, but they'll rotate heavy as the stack coming over. Kunk is here. Moonlight Shadow is used. They don't have Echo Slam to follow it up. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Kill there on the Kaka. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are mm -hmm. oh, just helping secure this stack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Spoil that shot. <laughs> Dyer's top tower has fallen. Regeneration. Take that tower, but again, opening up space for Phantom Wedzer. He's got the Diffusal Blade. Well, Shrek, too. I mean, he's pretty farmed. Top of the net worth for the two of them, and they are up by quite a bit. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Dyer's structures are fortified. Try to defend, but yeah, there's the Earthshaker. He'll TP up towards top. I think they really want to kill this Morphling. If they could find the Echo Swim. Now with the arrow, I think it would be a lot easier. But they've got the scan coming in, so they'll get caught coming over. He's going early Radiance, Lena, in the early Arcane Boots, Morphling. He's going into the Manta if he could get it. It's still a 5,000 net worth lead for IG. Like, they're working with what they've got. The Blink Dagger, though, there for the Axe. So that could be some control that maybe IG weren't expecting yet. But if they could get this Blink Dagger pretty quick on the uh, Earthshaker, they could respond. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Double damage. Hmm. So just about has that gold. Fisher coming in with the totem, and there it is. Has the 2250 to pick up the blink dagger. Moonlight Shadow will be used as top. Radiant's Kaka killed off by the Kunkka. It's that Tidebringer to finish him, but meanwhile, GGG is just pressuring the bottom lane. They can pressure this bottom tier 3 if they're not too careful. And he will. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. We don't want to just let this tower eat some damage. Top tower again, with how attack. push forward they are and, and the Radiant's fact that they are ahead, IG could uh, yeah, potentially go for a fight there had the Morphling come over into the wrong spot, and they might still do so. Doesn't have a Lincoln Sphere, so they could Fiends grip him, and being away from the Tier 3 tower would put him in a vulnerable position. And luckily enough for him, not everybody is here for the side of IG.
looking to reveal this blink dagger. Hasn't really been showing himself. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. OFS coming down through bottom. They are smoked up, but they're not going to catch up to anyone. And if they catch the wrong hero, that gives JT an opportunity to just come through. And they're going to smoke up and bring it right back. So here we go. Radiant this will be the blink scan. reveal. Although, Shadow. that Take ward us. probably spotted his inventory. And then uh, now the blink isn't. As much of a reveal, but they've got the arrow. Here we go. Axe in a bit of trouble. The split earth hits. Now the boat coming through. Echo slam down towards bottom. Their focus is the morphling who they'll get. Fiend's grip on the axe. They got themselves a second. And then they get themselves a third on the Lena. You never knew your place. Arrow. Ogre nowhere really to weave that. and well, He's dead too. Well done there from IG. Capitalizing on their lead. Good moving forward, but, eh, you know, nothing really to do there. with this advantage. I mean, they got a couple of kills there. They'll continue to invade the Radiant Jungle, which means they're going to expand where they can farm and expand their net worth lead. You've got the Radiance, which will help the Kunkka farm. Morphling, though, being held back from this Manta for way longer than he would have liked. And now they'll spot themselves the Ogre at the kill. Continue to roll these pickoffs. Continue to expand your net worth advantage. Bloodstone here for the Lashrak, who is 5 0 3. Emo hasn't died yet. And they can continue to give chase and, and, and just make this Lashrak stronger and stronger. Stages too. Echo Slam available in 10. Smoke coming out from LFS. But this will, yeah, will be against the Aegis. They're not coming over nearly quick enough. I don't know if they're even going to want to fight this. Morphling's just his item progression has been a little bit slower than he would have liked, but not bad in terms of net worth. Sitting at about 10,000. Thousand behind the Lashrak, who has the Aegis now and going into the Kaya. Manta defusal here for the Phantom Lancer. He's way far ahead. 4,000 net worth ahead. I mean, GGG really hasn't been bothered. Arrow coming through. Regeneration. Scouts out, but doesn't land, which is fine. And now they'll have the Diabolic Edict to try to push this tower. Backdoor's still on it. They've got the stun. They'll look for a potential blink call, but the Fissure coming out from the side blocks them off. Now they've got the Yules as well as the Split Earth. Setting up for a potentially a big Echo Slam and will come through. There it is. Lena going down. They'll take out the Kunkka. They'll look for the Ogre and make it a third. And they're going to try and bring down the Axe. 
At least he's out of mana. Not much he can do. Kunkka just bought back. He ends up dying. And well, this game gets really hard. He's out of mana now. Has to try and regen it up. Also change your attention over to the Morphling. GG needs to be a little bit careful. He's not the one who has the Aegis. Nightmare. Keeping him safe. Doppelganger comes in. Earthshaker trying to run. They get the kill on a JT, but they're going to lose the Axe. And they might lose the Kunkka too. And they will. Morph. On the Yules. And that works out in the favor of IG. IG have really found their openings to move in on this Radiant side, and and they haven't had much of an answer. Yes, they got a kill there on Ali, and I believe they also and they also killed JT. But other than that, I mean, it's not really that much, and they're gonna lose the Lena here too. Thirteen thousand net worth lead, and when you feel this kind of lead, Radiance top tower is under attack. I mean, it, it, it's Radiance hard to feel comfortable outside of like this area. So that means you're waiting for creeps to come your way in all these lanes, and I mean, you're stuck to just this part of the map. Yes, you can try and get out, but look at that—you're dead. Like, you're past the line. These two are past the line as well. They could just be dead here, too. I mean, I think, luckily, they've got this tier, too. So, it's not that bad. Dire structures are fortified. Shadows take us. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Fissure hits. They've got the totem. Morphling in trouble. Manta comes out, but they've got the arrow. BKB is going to be popped. Morphling trying to man fight. I'm not sure if that's the right move, but they've got the torn as well as the boat. The Yules hits onto the Kunkka, and now they've surrounded him. Out of mana, Feeding's grip in, and yeah, the stun's going to be there, but the Kunkka's dead anyway. Dead for 52. Blink call onto two. Echo Slam comes in. And they've got the Fissure to follow it up. They'll get the kill to the Lena as well as the Axe. Three heroes gone. They look over at the Ogre. They'll avoid the arrow, but won't avoid death. over at the Ogre who just bought back and uh, that is a dieback. GG is called by the Lena. They've got the Yules to look for the Morphling Doppelganger back into the base but he did call GG and that will be it. So a quick game two there, just under 27 minutes for IG. 25 to 6, nothing really doing for a look for Smile. They get 2 owed. And I mean, IG played it perfectly. 9 0 and 8 for Emo, 5 0 and 9 for GGG. 7 2 and 13 for their four position, Marana. And you take a look, wire to wire win here for IG. So overall, they take a quick 2 0. That was their last series of the. Group stage might be involved in a tiebreaker. We'll see at the end of the night. And uh, that is it here for this series. And coming up next, we'll have E-Home against Sirius. Not a bad series. Or, well, you know, it definitely holds consequence. So we'll see what happens. We'll be back with that in just a moment. I'm your caster, B-Cop, at B-Cop92 on Twitter. 
Follow me to know when I'm casting. Follow me to help get that verified check. And uh, we'll be back in uh, just a moment. Sorry about that.